What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're only here for the football manager tactic, then click on the link below with the timestamp because I'm going to use some time talking about Roma's tactic in 2001. So this is, has nothing to do with the game. In a couple of days, football manager 2022 is going to go out of beta and uh, go live. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that because as I teased in my previous video here, I'm going to do a Roma save. I do a Roma save every single football manager game as my first save because I'm just a huge Roma fan. But this time it's going to be a little bit different because I'll be using the tactics that won Roma their last Scudetto in 2001 with Capello as their manager. So you could maybe see a little bit about the tactic I've been using in the beta to test it out before trying it for real. And it's been really successful. Right now, I'm um, I'm leading the Serie A. I lost uh, a couple of games, but the games I've won have been just a huge goal route. Um, this tactic is really effective in creating a lot of chances. And luckily for, for me, some of my players are good enough to actually convert those chances into goal. But looking at the squad Roma had in 2001, the, the squad Roma has in 2021 is not even close to being on pair with that squad but right now we're going to look uh, into the tactic that i've been using and maybe talk a little bit about uh, changes in the tactic go uh, when the game goes out of beta but we'll also first and foremost talk a little bit about the tactic that roma use in real life during their scudetto run so roma last won the scudetto in 2001 uh, with capello at the um, at the manager seat and Roma used a tactics that was uh, three at the back, two very, very offensive wing backs, two holding midfielders, a trequartista. And for you who don't know what that role is, even though the role has been available in Football Manager for some time now, it's a very creative role, a role that doesn't have a lot of um, pressure on it uh, to, to defend. Um, it's a creative role in the sense that the player in playing that role would just have free reins to roam between the lines and uh, drive the ball forward, but also deliver some deadly passes. So during Roma's 2000 and 2001 campaign where they won the Scudetto, the man that used to play at the trick artista position was no, none other than Tati himself, the local Roma boy who spent all his career at, uh, at Roma. And... Capello saw what genius Tati was and created that role specifically for him because his his um, attributes were just perfect for that role. Tati was very creative. He he had a good vision and had a very good passing technique. So that was one of the main reasons he used him as a trequartista because the trequartista is just a creator. He he really is excels at finding other players with those brilliant passes which, which Tati was just brilliant at but another one of Tati's uh, really important attributes was his runs forward with the ball and his shot even with the right and left foot he was just such a deadly attacker and um, looking at our squad right now in 2021 the only player that maybe has some of the qualities that Tati had is uh, Lorenzo Pellegrini but he is nowhere near the, the quality of Tati. And I haven't even used Pellegrini at the, at the position Tati used to play. But I will get into that later. Um, some other features that were um, that defined the Roma tactics in 2000 and 2001 season was the two very offensive wing bands. And the one um, was more offensive than the other. Roma was very lucky to have maybe one of the best wing backs to ever play the game in Cafu. He played at the right side, and he was—he almost played both as a winger and as a as a wing back. He was just all over the right side, and he dominated the right side. And I think he was one of the most important players for Roma during that Scudetto run. On the other side, Cand Candela, the Frenchman, was a little more defensive, still going forward a lot, but he would drop down a little bit lower. So when Cafu eventually eventually was caught out of position during a counter attack, he could slot back into the back three and actually make it into a back four. 
Um, so Roma guarded itself um, by having Candela be a little more defensive. Uh, in the back, uh, Zago, Samuel and Zebina were the three players that played the most and Aldair played uh, a little bit also. But in the defensive three, um, the two uh, outer center backs were given a little more freedom to go forward. And um, that makes that made some overloading situation on each flank and actually going forward also. In the middle, it was usually Emerson and Tomasi playing. And they both re kind of reminded of each other. They were good holding midfielders, good defensive abilities also, but also good going forward. And Tomasi was just an engine. He could run all day. I've already spoken about Tati. He was in the position just behind the two attackers and in front of the midfield too. And he was just given free reign to do actually what he pleased. Um, so going to the attack, of course, they had the complete forward in Gabriel Batistuta. He was just a perfect attacker. He was good with feet. He was good with head. He was just the overall complete attacker. And I would say during my time as a Roma fan, I haven't seen a better attacker than Batistuta. The other attacker, so Roma had two other attackers that would fight um, for the other position, uh, which was more of a more of a deep lying forward. Um, and Cap Capello actually usually used Marco Del Vecchio at that position just because Del Vecchio was a little bit different than Batistuta. Del Vecchio was a huge guy. He was very tall. So you wouldn't look at him and see um, the type of player that, that he actually was. He, he was a really workhorse. He would just run all day, pressure the defenders, run wide. And that would actually give Batistuta some space to operate in because defenders had to follow Del Vecchio um, and that made some room for um, for Batistuta. Montella was the other attacker and he was a lot different than the other two guys because he was just an all-out poacher. He would always find those small spaces. He was a good finisher. He was quick also, but he just didn't fit uh, into this tactic because once he played alongside Batistuta, they kind of occupied the same spaces um, as leading the attack. So Capello usually... Um, used Batistuta with Del Vecchio and sometimes Montella, sometimes Montella instead of Batistuta. So I talked about a little bit about the tactic that Roma used in the 2000 and 2001 season when they last won the Scudetto. Now I want to bring the Scudetto back to Roma. So how can we do that? I want to replicate the tactic as best that I can with the, with the tools that I've been given in Football Manager. So let's just take a look at our squad in Football Manager 21. Uh, sorry, 22, and let's see what players are we, we're going to use in what positions, what player roles we're going to use, and also how do these players we have right now compare to the players that Roma had. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at the um, at standings here. So you can see I'm leading Serie A um, almost halfway throughout the season, and um, yeah, just look at that goal difference. I've been just scoring tons tons of goal and uh, Tammy Abraham my top scorer here was 16 uh, on all competitions he's uh, he, he's physically a good player not technically but um, he gets the job done you can see in Syria I scored 11 goals so far in 13 appearances and six assists so yeah it's pretty good um, he's been doing good for me and uh, lost two games to Lazio and Torino which was a little bit disappointing but I have won um, some games with uh, some really high figures, as you can see here, um, Inter 5-0, mm -hmm. um, and Milan 5-2, and Genoa 4-0, so I've been actually doing some doing pretty good here. Um, so let's take a look at the tactics, and right now I put together a team here, which is the team I usually play with, um, so I... I did change change it up a little bit because usually Pellegrini plays here and I have Zaniolo here on the shadow striker um, position. But Roma didn't play like this. Roma did play with a trequartista and Pellegrini is the closest player to Totti uh, that I have right now. So I thought that um, going forward I will be changing uh, this role to a trequartista and using Pellegrini there. But that leaves out Saniolo, and I might actually play him here as a as a deep line forward. I haven't tried that yet, so I will be trying that to see what effect it has. 
so this is the this is the lineup and as you can see i've been utilizing the new um, player role wide center back and these guys are actually ro running forward a lot um i even have had mancini do an, an overlap here and uh, get an assist to tammy with a cross so it's been it's been uh, going really well with the these three back here um i've been playing uh, this ball playing defender the center of the three i've been playing him on defend duty but i've just recently changed to cover and i've stopped using offside trap so i'm excited to see how that's going to work out i'm still a little bit um in, uh, unsure if um, the second striker is going to be a deep line forward or a false nine i don't have the right player for the false nine because that player needs to be technically good a good dribbler and so on and i don't think that Shomurodov here is the right player for that position. So I've been using him as a deep line forward and he's done fine. He's not that been um, a world beater or something, but looking at his player attributes, he's not a good player. So he's been doing okay for me um, so far. So I usually play on positive mentality sometimes and switch it up to attacking, but I just find attacking to be a little bit too intense uh, on my players. And um, in FM22, they have made a change uh, on the player um, stamina and uh, the intensity that you use on your tactics. So I just find if I use too high intensity, my players get a little bit, um, they, they get tired quicker than, uh, than in their previous games. So I use, usually use positive to start on it, then I just um, use attacking or balance if I'm in a big lead and I just need to play the rest of the game out. Um, so my in possession tactics here, um, just using uh, standard width and uh, run a defense because I have some really good, really good uh, players to, that can run with the ball. So I've been experimenting with this and I've been experimenting uh, with more expressive. Um, I'm, I'm not sure on these yet. Um, I'll still be doing some um, some tests to see what is best. But I don't want to stray too far from the Roma tactics uh, that you use in real life. And as far as I can tell, they have been using a lot of running onto the defense, especially Kafu and Tati. So I might just leave it like this um, standard passing because I don't I don't like the short pass because the, I just want the ball to go forward once my player have it, especially th these two players here. So once they get the ball, I want the ball to move forward because I have three very attacking players that can that can do a lot of damage to opposing uh, players and a little, uh, a little bit higher tempo because I, I do want to play faster paced football so in transition um, just a standard counter press and counter sometimes uh, later in the game I just um, instead of counter press I do regroup or just turn it off completely just not to make my players more tired than uh, they need to be um, yeah, and just focus on counter-attacking football. I th I think it's working actually quite quite good in in this year's um, football manager game. So out of possession is just um, it depends on what team I'm playing against. I usually don't play with uh, tighter marking, um, and then if I play um, away from home, uh, I sometimes start out a little bit deeper. And then as the game progresses, I might move this a little bit forward uh, if I can see that I need to press higher on uh, specific teams if uh, if they play short passing and they have the ball a lot and they need to press them a little more. So this is the basic tactic that I've been using. Um, and yeah, um, it's been really good for me. So you can see, um, I'm just going to show you here the general performance from the Data Hub, which is again a new feature in FM22. As you can see, um, this gray uh, circle, if you call that in here, that's the Serie A average. And the goals per game and expected goals per game, I'm just out of, yeah, completely uh, at the maximum here. Um, I really score on a lot of goals and make a lot of chances. Shots per game at almost 22, that's just crazy. Um, I don't think I've seen a team be even close to that. So yeah, um, I'm really happy with this uh, tactic and I'll still be doing some tweaks to it and um, hopefully once the game is out, I will, uh, the tactic will be um, really good. Uh, now, they sometimes make a little bit changes from the beta version to the full version, but I don't, 
I, I hope it won't affect uh, it won't affect um, the tactic part too much. Um, and just uh, to, to compare actually the squad to um, how the squad was in the in two thousand and one, um, I don't I don't think any of my players can be compared to uh, the players whom I had in the Scudetto season. Obviously, Tati, the the um, good player. I mean, Zaniolo is a pretty good player, and he's actually done pretty well for me. But still, he he's not a trequartista here. He is more of a shadow striker, as I've been using him, because he's really good at dribbling, really aggressive player that make those bombing runs into the into the enemy into the enemy um, opposing area in front of the goalkeeper, and he scores actually a lot of goals. Um, so if I if I would say some of my weakest areas that I definitely need to upgrade, um, then it's my two backs. I mean, Karstorp is nowhere near near Kafu's level. Uh, that's definitely an area that I need to upgrade. His stats are not that good, but he's good enough maybe to be a reserve. I definitely need a better right back. I bought um, Andreas Christensen from Chelsea. Uh, he's been doing great. I think he can be a really good player for me, so I'm actually pretty happy with my back three here. Uh, Chris Smalling, I've actually sold him to Real Madrid here. Um, I'm just, I just want to get rid of him, of him and his uh, high wage because I don't think he has any. Um, he, he doesn't have any business in a club like Roma. He's just not good enough for me. Um, and I, I'm getting um, Spinazzola back from an injury, so I'm actually not sure how good he's going to be. I mean, looking at his stats, he looks like a decent. Player, so I'm looking forward to to seeing him in action. And then I have Calafiori here, the young uh, player. So I'm, I might not even get a new uh, left back, but definitely a new right back and definitely a new D line uh, forward here. That's really important position because I can get a better better player than Shimurdov, and it, it, this player needs to be able to drift a, a lot. And when he gets the ball, he needs to be good at passing and dribbling to maybe set up some of the other players here. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely going to get a new deep line forward and a right back. So I'm actually overall pretty happy with the squad. I mean, it does have some potential. And um, I I did do some uh, outgoing transfers because I think a lot of these players are just not good enough. So first of all, Chris Smalling and Carlos Perez and Mkhitaryan, three players that are going out. Uh, actually, I can see Carlos Perez has not... Oh, he joins uh, Olympic. So yeah, and it would be good to get them uh, out of the pay, uh, pay um, yeah, wage budget. Sorry, um, I did. I do have a lot of wage budget, but that's because I've been uh, filling a little bit with the uh, with the slider here. I don't need a lot of transfer budget right now, so I'm just gonna um, focus more on the wage part. But it will be good. Um, I mean. Yeah, looking forward to next season. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to playing the rest of the time here in the beta and testing out the tactic and getting as close as I can to, to the Roma tactics from 2001. So thanks for watching and uh, see you guys later.